Hello, this is Scott Carpenter. I wanted to answer some questions uh, that uh, my readers have uh, from time to time. And uh, one of the most common questions I get is, uh, why do I not put cameras out at my house uh, when I'm claiming I have home visitations? And so I want to kind of go over that. Uh, I've had uh, home visitations now for about three years. And I have tried uh, putting cameras out. In fact, uh, I've tried multiple times with different types of cameras. Uh, my first attempt uh, at putting out cameras was putting out trail cameras. And uh, I actually would put them on the railing over here. And uh, <clears throat> because of my wife's eyewitness accounts and other evidence, it was apparent that the Bigfoot were coming across the fence right up there in that corner. And so I put out uh, trail cameras here and sometimes over here right in there and uh, what happened was I did get a couple of decent uh, uh, times I got uh, some eye shine and I got a vague figure uh, squatted uh, right there where by my finger right there against the tree across the fence and then I had eye shine of what appeared to be a, an adult Bigfoot holding a, a infant Bigfoot uh, right through there uh, in the back center of that person's backyard and I got an eye shine in the middle of their backyard. And then uh, it seemed not long after I got those photographs that uh, stuff started happening to my uh, trail cameras. They started putting them face down. I would come out in the mornings and I'd find them laying face down, not knocked off or, you know, messed with that way. They were just laying face down. And uh, that kept happening over and over again. Then they would be, sometimes there would just be a white washout in front of the camera. Uh, almost like something was standing right in front of it or laying something in front of the camera and then uh, and then the next time the camera would go off there would be nothing there It'd just be taking photographs of the backyard and so uh, that, that became kind of frustrating and so I tried another tact uh, I put out uh, uh, this Logitech camera here this is it's uh, shorted out because it was in the weather and it, it died but before it died I actually had hit, hit it here, <clears throat> and at the time, the uh, food tub was over here, and the Bigfoot were getting in the food tub, standing right there. So I um, had that uh, watching uh, the food tub, and I would put it out at night. As you see here, I've got a, a low-intensity fluorescent light, and uh, every night I'd go to bed, I actually had a cable ran along and hit the end of the house and I had a computer hooked up to it and I would just turn on the video camera and then uh, from time to time during the night when I'd get up during the night I would come out and turn on the floodlights you know hoping maybe I could catch something either in the low light or with the floodlights well one of the issues with that is is the low light of course but the other issue is just the amount of video that's got to be reviewed I did it for about three months uh, that's you're talking about uh, three months and that's 30 days in a month eight hours that's nine times eight 72 that's 720 hours worth of video that's a lot of video to review for anybody even in fast forward it's still a lot if you're going to you know catch anything and it just be it became just impossible to do uh, there was just no way I could do it plus I had some really crazy things happen to the camera some nights it would just malfunction and that would coincidentally be the nights that uh, some food would go missing uh, one night 
something an uh, object was laid in front of it uh, I did catch one night I did catch a mysterious figure and I'm going to put the link to my uh, blog on the uh, in the comments and you can go look I have a whole section on home visitations there and I got a I flipped the light on about three o'clock in the morning and I got a really odd looking figure looking through the rails right there And, uh, but, uh, that was the only, that was my only success with the camera before it just got too much to do. I just didn't have enough time to watch all the, all the video. My other attempt was I had a friend send me a, uh, a night scope and I actually attached a camera to the night scope and I've done videos on that. I actually did capture a video of a, a Bigfoot over there and everybody poo-poos and says it's Pedoria, which you can't have Pedoria during the middle of the night, but anyway. So, you know, even when you get a video of a Bigfoot, you know, everybody just, it's not what it is, Boo. So, you know, with that being said, uh, the problem with the scope is the fact that the scope, uh, you had to focus the scope. You had to focus the scope either you know at a point in other words it's not a wide angle lens like this camera is where everything in the back porch is in focus so basically I'd have to focus it at the corner of the house or you know the spot in the backyard you know where I likely spot and then I would let it run to the battery ran out I tried that for several months with no success the only time I ever like I said I had a success is when I actually was holding it in my hand and I had the gut feeling something was messing around or something was out here so uh after that, uh, I do have a FLIR camera, and I am going to use the FLIR. I have been using the FLIR, and I've just been using it manually. I've been actually coming out here uh, during the uh, night and uh, just uh, swinging it just, you know, at odd times during the night. Now that the weather's warm, and I'm, I'll just cover the area. But it's an old FLIR. It was given to me as a loaner, and it's the handheld model that doesn't have a video camera attached. So I have to externally attach a video camera. And you know, you get about two hours, maybe three max operation out of it. So, you know, with my funding and everything, that's kind of limited as well. So that's the main reason, you know, that's why, you know, the trail cameras don't work. And the eyeball cameras, the Logitech cameras, those sort of cameras don't work. Now, some people suggest, well, why don't you get a home security system? Well, that costs money. And I'll just be frank with you, I don't have a lot of money. You know, I'm trying to raise a family. This is a hobby. This is, you know, I have no funding for my research. It all comes out of my back pocket. So, uh, I told one guy in a comment one time when he made a smart elk remark about how I should get cameras to cover everything and just put this thing to bed. I told him, I said, well, fine, buddy. I'll tell you what you do. You write me a check and you put the camera system in. And then I tell you even better is you can watch the thousands of hours of video. Can you imagine? 24 7 from six or seven cameras around my house how many thousands of hours that would be and someone's got to watch it so you know it's just not feasible and you're dealing with an entity the bigfoot that's as intelligent as we are and they're not stupid and they know what a camera is and they know how to avoid it or they also know how to disable one so uh, I know that's not the answer a lot of people are wanting to hear. They're probably very frustrated. Well, they're just too smart and they're too this and they're too that. And that is true. Every now and then they'll screw up. Every now and then you'll get a glimpse or you'll get a halfway decent picture. But most of the time it's very difficult to get them in front of the camera. So I uh, hope that kind of explains what was going on. Makes it a little bit easier to understand. But that's the main reason I just don't have cameras out is they don't work. And uh, uh, physical evidence is, is about all I'm able to, able to gather, whether it's hair or footprints or stuff like that, the handprints on the side of the house. And I will say this, and it's documented in my, uh, uh, on my uh, blog, I collected three hair samples from my house. Actually, all three hair samples came from that corner up there from tape in that corner.
and those three those three hair samples were in the Ketchum DNA study, and they were Bigfoot hairs. So, as far as proof, I've got hairs that came from this location that were in the Ketchum study and uh, had Bigfoot profiles. So that's about as good as you can get. So uh, I hope this was uh, a decent explanation. I hope it makes a little sense. And in the future, I'll try to answer more questions as they come up. I know there's been several. It's difficult to answer all the questions when you get, I'm literally now getting, I guess it's a good thing, but I'm getting a lot of questions and don't always have the time to answer them. So uh, appreciate your patience and thanks for watching.